Hello, everybody. Dorothy here, professional astrologer. You can find me on the web, nhastrologer.com. Today, in this forecast, we're going to talk about the next 10 days. I'm going to go from October 8th all the way over to the 17th of October. This is what I usually do for my Patreon group. We go actually a week at a time. I'm going a little extra because this week, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, lots going on. So I wanted to include that in this. And then you also can get a sample of how I, what I present to my membership. So let's get started. I will start off with sharing my screen with you. So let's pop that up. We don't need that there. Here it is. And so the very first aspect I want to talk about is on Friday, October 8th, we have, of course, the sun and Mars are now in their conjunction. Big, heavy duty stuff. It is intense and it can be quite uh, quite energizing. So even the day I, I post this forecast, which is October 7th, which is Thursday, this happens in the middle of the night. It's just after midnight here on the East Coast of the United States. So you're going to feel it in the middle of the night tonight. We're feeling it already. It's an applying aspect. So just so we know, this is uh, can be very adventurous, very energizing, all right? really pushing forward. Yes, Mercury is retrograde. So we, we need to you know, take our time with some of these things, but we still will feel, uh, could feel very um, energized, but also very impulsive. All right. So that's how we would look at that. And if you notice here, I mean, I use, um, for those who don't know, of course, I use the tropical Zodiac Placidus house system. Midheaven does its little thing back and forth at different points in time. Um, I do not use the ascendant or the midheaven in these forecasts because we are all somewhere uh, in a different place on the planet. So we will not include the house placements either. So that is what we do. Okay. I didn't want you to see it's my Facebook. <laughs> Let's go to the next chart. This is how it goes in Patreon. Very casual, very casual. This is not clean and neat, but it's quite informative, right? All right. So the next aspect that we have going on, of course, this is the this is an, another conjunction between the sun and Mercury. You know, they they make a connection approximately six times every year. And here it is. Mercury is retrograding and it is connecting to the sun and it won't take long before it connects to Mars. So that is all going on today. So today, meaning Saturday, October 9th. Mars conjunct the sun, Mercury, Mars are all conjunct in Libra. So again, really paying attention to the conversations, how dynamic we're feeling, who we may or may not be, you know, like being snippy with or argumentative with. Now, if you need to do that, you've got all the, you've got all the power behind you to do it, but we might have to uh, reconcile later on when Mercury comes back and conjoins the sun again later in the year. So watch your words. But then again, some of us have this energy and this is present for us to actually feel like we can finally speak up where we haven't been able to before. All right. So there is, there is positive ways to use this. And then there are ways that we might not be so positive, but it is what it is. So make sure and listen and pay attention to your words. And if you need to hold your tongue, because it's just better that way, then do it. But if you also feel you need to speak up, you <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to fly right out. Now, we also have uh, Venus and the moon. This is approximately when they come together. This is uh, Venus in Sagittarius. She just moved into Sagittarius yesterday. And with Venus and Sag and the moon coming together, they do that once a month. This is a beautiful uh, initiation for those who love to work with Venus. Um, you can see how they, they celebrate the moon connecting to Venus every single month. And this is here on Saturday the 9th. And so what is that? That's those two feminine planets coming together to, you know, to cooperate, to connect emotionally. And that Venus and Sag with the moon and Sag. And even here with that south node in the sign of Sagittarius, we have an awful lot of um, uh, older or, or memories or history really coming to the surface so we can uh, work through this and clear um, clear what's going on in our environment if that is something that is happening for you. All right, so let me get my next chart. All right, let's grab that next chart. There we are. 
Maybe we'll find it. Here we are. So this is fantastic. Yay. Another planet moving direct. So we have that going on on Sunday. Um, my local time is 10, 17 p.m. So here it is. This is Saturn stationary direct at six degrees of Aquarius. So the most important thing about this, I mean, of course, is that, you know, one, two, three planets are moving forward again, which is really going to help us to um, to start to open back up again and to take action. A lot of these planets have been uh, retrograde since the late spring. So it's it's just, we're gonna be feeling like if, if we've been feeling stuck and things aren't moving as quickly as we want, then we have this opportunity, you know, for things to move forward. Just be careful. We don't open the floodgates too quickly. So I'm glad that they they go one at a time, right? So Saturn is stationary direct on October 10th. Let me get my dates here. Again, I do this whole forecast the month ahead I do um, for one of my Patreon groups as well, one of my tiers. And so, and then I do the weekly and then I do a full moon and a new moon. So there's about five or six broadcasts each month uh, for the, the Patreon group, depending on your level. So on October 10th, um, with this being said, five to six degrees, 52 minutes, the last time that Saturn was at that area, that degree. So that's the shadow phase when it started was February 14th, 2021. Yeah. It wasn't retrograde then, but that's when the last time it was at six degrees and 52 minutes. So you're going to want to look back to see what was happening for you then and that area of your chart. Of course, Saturn takes two and a half, approximately two and a half to three years to move through a sign. So depending on your house system, it could be in one area or two different areas. Look to see where that is, because that's where, you know, Saturn and Aquarius, so rules, regulations, how those are breaking down, how you're trying to reassess what's important for you in regards to your rules, your regulations, and how you want to, in, uh, in some ways, you know, break out of the old patterns. It doesn't mean we don't get to keep the information and the knowledge we've gained through time and wisdom, Saturn, but now it's time to put it into play into a whole different way, Aquarius. All right, so let's figure out where that is for you and uh, go from there. Let's see. Next, I want to work on is the quarter moon. So let's work on that. So I do talk about these a lot in um, just a lot of different broadcasts. I like working with the lunar phases. And, you know, when we have this lunar gestation phase, it's very important to pay attention to because it's a longer phase. It takes three years for this from, from new moon as it comes back around to new moon. So new moon first quarter is nine months later. The next phase is the full moon nine months later. The next phase is that last quarter, nine months. And then nine months after that is back to a new moon. It all happens in a similar area of the zodiac. So here we have this first square, so between the sun and the moon in this month's activities. However, this is related to nine months ago. And so nine months ago would have been the new moon on January 13th, 2021 in Capricorn. So it was very close to this 20 degrees of Capricorn here. I'll take a quick peek, January 13th. This is how we do this. And people are here live. Yes, January 3rd, it was at 23 degrees of Capricorn was the new moon. And this first quarter is at 20 Capricorn. Look at that area in your chart. What is it? What was activated? What did you begin back in January 13th, 2021? Doesn't have to be that exact day, but in that time frame, what were you working on? What were you initiating? What new moon rituals were you uh, putting in your journal? Write out how you feel every new moon, because every single new moon starts one of these cycles. There's a lot of stuff that's always going on at the same time. And it, us astrologers, we find the pattern in the cycle that's most important to us that we love and then we want to look at. And I love this lunar phase, uh, this lunar gestation phase part. It's the work of um, Dietrich Pesson if you want to research that more. So what was going on then? Now we are at that first quarter moon, October 12th. It's in the middle of the night. However, we have an opportunity here to see what we have, what's starting to grow, what has taken root from the new moon exercises and, and things we put into play back in January. It's not, it's as simple as that, but you know, we go deeper in this in the Patreon page. So October 13th, Wednesday, October 13th, we have Venus in Sagittarius 
with, um, let's see, we have a few things here. Hold on, let me, uh, let me get my you know what together. I have this, I wrote this out funny. Here we go, sorry. <laughs> I had to make sure we have Venus, sextile Saturn and sun, quincunx, Neptune. The Venus sextile Saturn, this is very easy going. It's, it's to me, it, it, it's masculine energy, right? Cause it's, it's uh, Sagittarius and Aquarius. So it's very outgoing and very fun, a little stable a little stabilizing Venus sextile Saturn can be somewhat stabilizing, but not a whole lot because it's an easy, easy sextile, same polarity. The quincunx between the sun and Neptune, that's this aspect right here. That quincunx can be a little bit difficult. The sun, Neptune, lots of times it's quick. The sun moves quickly, but however, it's hard for us to see clearly when any planet is connected to Neptune. Now, the whole world has Neptune and uh, Pluto sextile. That's been going on for pretty much most likely everybody alive has that pretty close to everybody. Um, but the sun to Neptune or any planet when it connects with Neptune uh, can create a fog or uh, a period of being unsure. So if you are unsure, the best way to use Neptune um, is to first off, this quincunx wants us to stop and make adjustments, and then transformation can happen. So, if you are not clear about some decisions that you're needing to make, or something that's that's you know in your face or in your life right now on this day, especially Wednesday the 13th, then take your time and you know close your eyes and meditate. And that's Neptune as well. Neptune and Pisces wants us to connect to the inner, to the inner self, to the higher self to that intuition, to that ultimate knowing. So connect to that if you're feeling unsure. Mars will be connecting. Mars is already close to being in the quincunx. I like a really tight aspect when it comes to the quincunx. So it's usually within two degrees. So Mars will be there shortly. So Mars is gonna be the same way. So we'll be insecure about the action that we're gonna take. All right, let me take a peek at that. Let me see if I can find that in here. Let's have a lot of notes. But uh, hey, it's coming up. So that's on the 13th. And then when does Mars connects? Mars connects with it on October 16th. So you've just obtained the information for both of them. So that is what we're looking at right there. All right. So the best action to take is to stop, to meditate, to listen to your higher self, especially if you're unsure about what choices you're making. All right. What next do I want to talk about? We have a lot here. I always do a lot. Here's the sun and Venus. I mean, the sun is in a sextile with, of course, the moon and Jupiter. You know, Jupiter is staying still. Jupiter, this is fantastic. So let me tell you about that aspect. And then I'll, I'll, I'll riff a little bit about uh, what I think about um, Jupiter at 22 Aquarius. So sun and Mars trine the moon and Jupiter all right on here on the 15th and even into the weekend into the 18th is when Mars will be exactly trining Jupiter. So sun Mars trying Jupiter to begin with is, is very productive. We have a lot of action and movement. However, remember, we still have a quincunx going on between Mars, sun and Neptune. Yes, it changed houses because it's a different time of day and the earth spins. So remember, we still have this a bit of unsurety here. Trust your instincts because whatever we do, this air energy of Libra, finding harmony, finding balance, how am I taking charge? What do I need to do for me or and or my partners, partner, not just the spouse or the, you know, your domestic partner, <laughs> trouble finding that word, could be any, any partnerships that are important for you right now. And the sex style to these guys is very important. I, I love this because it's very beneficial. It's very enthusiastic. It's a lot of energy behind these two trines, as well as, again, the quincunx just wants us to make those adjustments. We don't want to be too fixed in a way that we are thinking and doing. So I'm going to take our time with that. Now, I, I will end us with this. So with Jupiter, actually, Jupiter is just about ready to make its station. And it does that on the 18th of October. So I guess I will show you that. Um, 
Jupiter Direct. Here it is on the 18th of October. I'm going a little far from what I usually do for the group, but I'll do this for you guys. So 18th of October, Jupiter stationary direct at 22 degrees and 19 minutes. And we also have Mercury stationary at that point as well. And Mercury goes, Jupiter's at 1.30 a.m. Eastern time. And Mercury is stationary direct at 11 17 a.m eastern time so two of these these two guys moving direct after the 18th the 18th the 17th and the 18th might feel very 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 stuck because when these planets are stationary in my opinion this is when we really feel the intensity of a retrograde planet is because of when there's no movement and we want movement and we're ready to do this. So just recognize that if you're feeling a little bit of frustration on the 17th, even the day before that, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, just, just allow that. Just don't push, don't push hard against things that you don't need to push against just because it's so important uh, in the fact that a lot's not moving. Okay, now what's happening here too? Now I want us to look at Jupiter at 22 Aquarius. Maybe I'll do a separate video for this. I'm just gonna, no, I'll give it to you now. <laughs> casual, right? Casual, casual, casual. So Jupiter's been at 22, between 23 and 22 degrees since the um, third week of, of September and 22 degrees, third week of September, all the way until it finally moves um, moves past 22, 23 degrees at the second week in November. So we have weeks and weeks of Jupiter sitting still at 22 degrees. And that makes a lot of, that's important. First off, this behemoth, but the great benefic is not moving very far. He's got gravitational pull in his own, in the science of its gravitational pull, he's our protector. If, if asteroids get within our or within his orbit, he tends to pull them before the sun gets a hold of him. So he's our protector. We've seen that back in the 1990s when a whole bunch of uh, big asteroid kind of broke up in its atmosphere and hit right into it. So anyways, the point of that being it draws attention and it's important. So we want to look at that metaphorically and energetically. So I know that in um, early April 2022, I know we're jumping way ahead, but in early April, just mark this in your calendars, early April 2022, the two malefics, Mars and Saturn, are going to be conjunct at the same point, 22 degrees of Aquarius. So look and pay attention to what's happening now, while this whole month of October, and again, plus or minus a week on either side, um, what is the important, what's important for you? What decisions are you making? What's shifting? What's changing? Really important to pay attention to this month of October and journal. And it doesn't have to just be facts. It's like, what's happening inside? What's where, what's where are you growing? Or what big decisions are you making? And again, it could just be the thought process. It's just like, I know I need to, I need to start doing this. So down the road, I'm able to do that. So it doesn't have to be immediate decisions or, or problem solving. It can be, but it doesn't have to be, especially since Mars and Saturn, these two guys coming together. Conjunction is you know, neither good or bad. I don't think any of them are neither good or bad. Some caught, but it depends on where it is for you and how you're using it. So that's just it in a nutshell. I go into way more. And I'm going to stop my share so I could see your faces. <laughs> I can't see your faces. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thank you so much. And um, here on YouTube, all of the links are below. So you're welcome to um, come find me there. And um, you know the routine. Comment, like, and share. Blessings, everybody. And namaste. If I hit stop. <laughs>